welcome back it's Kendra from this DIY mom life today I am looking forward to sharing with you a little making update of all the things I've been working on in the last couple months here in some ways it feels like I haven't had any time to make anything but on the other hand I've got a pretty decent little selection of things to share with you today uh, that I have been working on so maybe that speaks for itself <laughs> so if you are new here like I said I'm Kendra I have two little kids and I actually have a third one on the way in the spring um, I shared a little more about that in my last video um, and so I'm hoping to put together a few kind of tutorials or make with me kind of things as I make a few baby projects um, but otherwise this is just kind of a regular update but you will notice it increase or <laughs> including some tinier projects. Um, I really like to make things for the kids and that is a lot of what I make um, but otherwise here on this channel you will find other videos about um, just general creative life and things of that sort. Things have been pretty quiet here lately. I do work full-time like I said I've got a two and a four year old. I've been pregnant and tired and just yeah, I haven't been making videos as much, but I really do hope that increases. I don't want to give up on this channel. It's just kind of taking a back burner at the moment. The first thing to share with you are these Christmas socks that you saw me working on in my last video. Um, this yarn came from Knit Crate, which is a monthly subscription service that they so kindly send me and I am always happy to try out. This is their cashmere, ugh, cashmere merino nylon blend, which makes it very soft and just really fun to work with. Don't have the tag hanging here right now, but I do have the little booklet that came with the sock package and I took it with me to work and back a few times. So it's looking a little tattered, but it's the Knitology Cozy Sock um, in the quilt colorway. <laughs> There's a little bit of information about it. It also comes with a pattern. This month it was the switchback pattern, um, which is here and it looks very cool. And I actually, if I'm being honest, I tried these socks. I think I started them three or four times. I started off with this switchback pattern, which looks very nice and it probably works for some people, but I followed it as written and I found that the pattern um, section made it really loose and it just wasn't staying on my foot very well and I tried using the heel in the pattern. Um, it doesn't say what kind of a heel it is. Um, it's a type of short row heel. Anyways it wasn't fitting me very well and I got frustrated but I got down that far before I um, first time I restarted because I cast it on too tight. This was my first time doing top down socks. Normally I do t um, toe up. So I initially cast on too tight. Um, so that was, I think, the last video. I had just been working on it, but I ripped that out. I got down below the heel using that switchback pattern and I just wasn't happy with the fit. So I ripped them out again and I just thought, I'm gonna stick to doing top down. I really wanna try it. Um, but I did the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern, which is just a very simple stitch pattern. Just a very basic one by one rib. one by one rib, basic pattern. And I tried the a slip stitch heel flap, which I have never done either. I somehow never have done a heel flap, but I'm really wanting to expand my horizons with different types of socks and just typical toe decreases. I don't know what the name would be, but where you decrease every other round. And so these are those socks. We'll also point out my dad made these sock blockers for me last year and I've really enjoyed using them. I haven't worn the socks themselves yet, um, but I think they will be really nice for Christmas. And like I said, with the cashmere, they are very soft. Now, while I was working on those, my daughter kept coming up and asking for a pair as well. I don't know if it was because of the Christmas pattern or she thought they were just bright and fun, but anyways, I had quite a lot of yarn left. They do come in the 100 gram balls. And so I made her her own little mini pair. These have been worn a couple times already and they just came out of the wash. So they do look a little fuzzy. Um, and that's just the cashmere. I don't think it's bothering her or anything. I haven't blocked them. I just, like I said, pulled them. They went through the washing machine and dryer and this is how they're looking now. This is the Rose City Roller Littles pattern, I think. It's just the kids one. And with the same slip stitch heel on it here. And they have been really cozy and warm for her too. She's, like I said, already been wearing them, but I think they'll be fun for Christmas. They just have that really simple rolled cuff on them. 
and they're a really quick pattern because there's not that long leg or anything. I asked her if she wanted tall socks or short socks and she wanted short ones, so that's what I made. There are two, but the other one is in the laundry pile somewhere and I didn't find it when I was taken through. So I did wanna show you those. I also do have a certain <laughs> decent sized ball, not enough for anything at all, but I might try to squeeze out one more tiny pair out of what is left. The other project I was working on in my last video was the Flax Light Sweater uh, by Tin Can Knits for my two-year-old. And I'm using Knit Pick Stroll Fingering in the Rainforest Heather colorway. So that is 75% merino and 25% nylon. I actually ordered way too much of this. I have quite a bit left, but here is the finished sweater. It's looking kind of loose, I think, just because of that window again behind me. Hold it up here, though. I really love this color. He's worn it for some pictures and things I'll try to insert here. I think it looks really cute. I think it's probably going to be his Christmas sweater, being that green. But yet it's not, like, overtly Christmas. It'll probably just be a regular church sweater kind of thing. I did add some short rows in the back. Um, you probably won't be able to really see them. Maybe you can in this light. <laughs> but anyways, when it's on, you can't really tell, but it does make it a little taller in the back. It is veering on the larger side. I think I made, I forget what the sizing's like. It was size three to four or something with this around size three, I think. It's very soft. I did put it in the washing machine and then just pulled it out and laid it flat to dry. And I think that's probably what I'll try to do moving forward. I know probably all these hand knits will last so much longer if I hand wash them. Maybe when I'm home full time, I will get back to that when I'm doing like diaper bullies and things that need to be hand washed. But for right now, I figure I'm going to be buying Superwash and even acrylics for their sweaters um, so that they are easy care because they do get used a lot and washed a lot. So I've got that and I also have quite a bit, like I said, of that left. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to try to make something kind of complimentary for my daughter for Christmas or what the plan is. I haven't really figured that out, um, but better to have too much than too little. Now I was also given some yarn for my birthday. It's just some Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca, it's called. I got two big balls of this. It's just in this gray color and I actually started making this rectangular scarf that's supposed to have buttons along the edge so you can wear it kind of like a wrap. It's just very simple knits and pearls. I'm kind of losing steam on this. It's maybe a little on the boring side to be knitting. So I am thinking about changing up my pattern before I get too much further in because it, I do have a lot of knitting ahead. Um, but that I have been working on a little bit here and there. But I, like I said, I'm past the excited stage, so I'm not sure if it's going to continue or not. Taking a little break to have some perspective on it. I do have another little sweater that I've been working on. The knitting part's done, but I haven't blocked it and I haven't picked up any buttons for it yet. So I'm going to continue it, consider it in progress still. Um, so to start with, I the wool I used is alpaca actually, and it's local, so meaning it's from Saskatchewan. Um, Jubilee Farms is what it, the farm name was, but when I looked it up, I couldn't figure out where exactly um, it was. So I picked this up probably back in January. I spun a little bit of it, kind of set it aside, and then I picked it up and spun the rest of it. Um, and I used all of the yarn I spun. It was 100 grams, and I knitted into this little cardigan. Probably gonna say it wrong, but it's the Pooparium Pooper cardigan. I'll link it below so you can check it out for yourself. This is a really common one. You probably have seen it on Ravelry before. The newborn size is free, and then you can also purchase it in the larger sizes. Um, it's kind of this, yeah, side fasten sweater with buttons down the side. Again, it's kind of rolling because I haven't blocked it or buttoned it yet. But yeah, I, th I really liked how the yarn's so marled and everything, and I think it'll really change the look depending on the kind of button that goes on. I do think it ended up larger than newborn size, but I have big babies, so I'm not too worried. I did make the sleeves a little larger when I realized that the body was wider than it should have been. 
for newborn size at least. Um, so that is that little cardigan. It was quick to knit up. Of course, baby things are, especially in those small sizes. Um, but I think it'll be really nice to have just as a layering item. So I've made a few other baby things and I'm gonna share them with you. They're all just quick little projects and I've been using up leftover scrap sock yarn. Um, it really helps that um, in a big ball of sock yarn you get so much leftover. These, this yarn here, I made a pair of socks for my daughter out of. I have a lot left, but I did go ahead and make this little toque. Thought it would be cute. We don't know whether it's a boy or a girl, but I just had a boy and I've got a lot of little boy stuff. Um, we've moved a couple times since he was born, so I thought I would make a few more kind of girlish things. Uh, most of the clothes will be kind of gender neutral anyways, but I thought if I made a few things to kind of pair with it, it would be easy that way um, and fun to make. So this is the little beanie, the little tied knot at the top. You can of course roll it up or down. And then since I had so much left, I went ahead and made a pair of little baby socks while I was at it. This is the yarn. One of the first ones I dyed and it ended up having really um, a narrow stripe repeat. And I didn't think it was kind of like, if you imagine this as a sock, those stripes are really, really skinny. Whereas in little baby socks and the pair I made for my daughter as well, they look more just like a normal striped sock. So I made those ones. I'll show you this pair too that I made. This is using leftovers from my Sunset Highway sweater. And these haven't been washed or blocked or anything. So that's just kind of how they are. It's really hard to tell in this light, but it's just a light purpley kind of color with some speckling in it. I dyed this one as well. I've been weighing all these little baby products when I'm done and realizing it takes like 11 grams for the hat or 16 grams for the socks. And so again, you can make something out of a really small little scrap. And I just kind of try to pay attention to make sure that I have enough um, or that I'm not making like each one too long if I'm making them, not two at a time. Um, but yeah, you can make it out of just the tiny little scraps and it's so fun to have a full pair of socks out of just a tiny little ball. So I've got lots of other little balls and things that might become socks or might just linger around. We'll see, maybe be a little hat or something. I've been trying to collect them together um, while I have someone small to knit for. So that's really all the knitting stuff I've been doing. However, I have been doing just a little bit of sewing as well. So I will share that with you. I started off every year at Christmas. I do try to make some Christmas pajamas for the kids. It actually started making them for everybody. But for me and my husband, it takes so much fabric and we didn't always wear them or after a few years, like they're still wearable. It's not like we're growing out of them like the kids. So I stopped making them for the adults, just for the kids, and it makes it pretty simple that way. I picked up this buffalo plaid. I went for fleece this year. In the past, I've done the flannelette pants. I did knit like stretchy jersey pants. Well, it was a top and bottom for my son and then like a nightgown for my daughter, but she wanted pants this year. So I went with that. I just use a really stretchy rib on the top that I had already. And then the fleece pants that are gonna be so cozy warm. And then I gave them a little cuff at the bottom. And I'm just gonna pick up a plain red shirt to go with them just so I don't have to make that as well. Not that I couldn't, but they don't always get worn as a pair anyway. So I'm gonna go with those. Though that's the size three. And this is a size six I made for my older, for my daughter. So anyways, I've got those done already, which is great. I really don't like having to worry about that as Christmas gets closer. Um, and it's just a nice tradition I really like to keep. And they get a new pair of pajamas, not to mention the fact that they love to match. Might not last forever, but while it is here, I want to take full advantage of it. Another sewing project I've been working on is baby related. Uh, if you watched my last video, you would have seen me make this. Um, and that's just, I picked up some really stretchy fabric and made this little hat, it's a top knot hat here, and then a swaddle blanket. This, like I said, is that very stretchy cotton and spandex blend. So I think it'll be perfect for that. It's a beautiful periwinkle color, which is one of my favorites. Again, 
I consider this gender neutral, <laughs> but I have a pretty broad view of what that can include. Um, but that is just a new thing I made for the baby here. Um, and if you're interested in seeing how I selected my fabric or made the hat, I kind of took you along with me in my last video. My last little sewing project is pretty basic, but I thought I'd share it anyways, and that is a diaper pail liner. <laughs> now, I do cloth diapers. I don't know if you're familiar with the system, but basically I like to have, or I have purchased a large garbage can, and I put a liner in there, so I put the dirty diapers in there, and then every other day on wash day, I just take that liner out and go throw it all in the washing machine and put a new one in. Basically the system. <laughs> now, two babies ago, I made these. I picked this up ages ago at Fabricland. It's really waterproof. I think they used it on like hospital beds. It was called, hosp I forget what they called it, hygiene something, I don't know. It is waterproof and it works okay, but it has zero stretch to it. It doesn't fit in very well. I didn't do a very good job. I used what I had, like I had purchased it not for this purpose. Um, but I just kind of divided it into three, <laughs> made three pale liners. They don't fit all that well. They're the right width, but like this one's very short, shorter than the diaper pail. And so I felt like it was always a struggle. I was always overfilling them. Um, and it's just one of those things I was hoping to replace this time around because I use it every single day and it's annoying every single day. <laughs> so that's what I decided I wanted to do. And it just kind of worked out a few months ago at Value Village when I was, I try to take a look through their yarns. Sometimes you can find really nice wools on for cheap. And they also often will do fabric bags, just a clear plastic bag with a bunch of fabric shoved in. And I picked up just a small bag with both of these um, fabrics, and these are the PUL fabrics, so they're waterproof. They're what a lot of cloth diapers are made out of. Um, there was these, and then also some smaller cuts and pieces. Looked like someone had purchased it and started making some like wet bags out of it, and then maybe gave up, or I don't know, just had extra. extra. So they included some of the bags they had started. And then in that bag, there was also some other fabrics, and actually, made a dress out of that. I've gotten good use out of this little grab bag. I think it was $4.99 or something for all of this. And I happen to know that this PUL at Fabricland, which is my local fa fabric store, is, um, is it Babyland? Babyville is the brand. And a lot of it goes for like $24.99 a meter. So I really did get a lot. These pieces are quite large. Um, they're not perfectly rectangle or square or anything, but definitely usable. So I went ahead, I actually just did this earlier today, and I, I have plans to make more, but I thought I'd show you where I got so far. I made this pale liner. Um, it's very simple. I just made it the right shape. I put handles on it, because that's one thing I have found so annoying about this other one, is trying to carry it downstairs. So I did add some handles. I also um, just folded down the edge of it and put in some elastic so that it'll kind of hug onto the garbage can. Not that we use a garbage, but the diaper pail. Um, and yeah, I mean, it will get filled up and this lining will show a little bit, but I think it'll work just fine for what we need it for. And it's quite large and simple to make. I do have more pieces, so I'm trying to decide whether to use some of them to make um, like on the go wet bags to put diapers in or else to make some diaper covers. I would like to make a couple of those. So we'll see. I'm sure I'll show them with you or share them with you when I make those decisions or finally make some progress on them. I wanna share with you a few plans in the future or things I've received. The first one being the latest knit crate. This was the, this was the October knit crate. Um, here's a tag here in the colorway smudge. It is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Just light lavender lilac kind of colors. Very pretty. So with the October crate came an improved sort of pattern. Now every month there is supposed to be, this is for the sock crate, one skein of sock yarn as well as one pattern. And these, when I first started getting it, was just like a one page printed 
um, paper showing a picture of the socks maybe or some sort of design and it gave you a code to download a pattern on Ravelry and if you didn't do it within a certain window I think it did expire um, if you didn't add it to your library so then they started printing it off um, I first this was September and it was just on this um, regular printer paper kind of thing color and everything with the pattern in there um, and then I showed this to you in my last one they turned to this glossy print booklet for the what would this be I guess this would be um, August September and now for October it's like a full magazine kind of situation going on here knit inspirations it has um, yeah it's their own produced guide here but it has like the glossary there's just all sorts of information about some of their different yarns so this was a really nice touch for this box I haven't made anything from it yet but I've had a lot of fun flipping through it and planning especially now that I have a number of single skein um, of sock yarn that came with my knit crate that I like this isn't something I naturally would think oh I can't wait to knit a pair of socks with it but maybe it would go really well for a shawl and I saw there are some shawl patterns and other things in here and this is like a pretty hefty little magazine booklet um, so there's really a lot of options that they are providing here something else I'm really looking forward to is the fact I ordered a interchangeable set of Chiagu needles which is one of my favorites and hasn't come in yet so I'll share the details when it comes but I am so excited about it I as you many of you know I have compared quite a few of the needles in the sock sizes but I don't have so many in the larger sizes I do have a set of interchangeables by boy Brand, boy brand um, and I still use those all the time but I'm really excited about this upgrade all right that's really all I have to share with you this week this month whatever we're at thank you for watching if you have any questions leave them down below I'd love to chat with you there and otherwise I will see you in the next video bye